Secretary of Affairs, Finance, and Policy meeting to order. We have a quorum present. Uh, Lee Bliss, have you had a chance to review the uh, the minutes? Absolutely, Mr. Chair. I move that they be advanced. <laughs> we support you. Lee Bliss moves approval of the minutes for March 18, 2024. Is there any discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, we have approved minutes. Uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Tradition with this committee. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have uh, one bill on the agenda today, House File 1581. Chair Newton is carrying the bill for the Department of Military Affairs and the Department of uh, Veterans Affairs there, and this uh, modifies their appropriations. Uh, Mr. Uh, Chair, would you like uh, to move your bill? Yes, I would, uh, Mr. Chair, and uh, I do have a DE-1 amendment. <coughs> okay, would you like to move and describe that amendment? Yes, a DE-1 amendment uh, simply eliminates anything that has to do with funding and uh, uh, includes the uh, memorial at the uh, Mendota Bridge and increases the amount that the uh, Department of Military Affairs can ask for bonding. Okay, great. It doesn't increase bonding, it just increases the amount they can ask for. Right. Uh, any discussion to the DE amendment? Uh, if not, we can just uh, move advance it. So all those in, in favor of uh, approving the DE amendment? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. The bill is in the uh, in the position, the uh, condition you would like it to be in, so you can may proceed. Yes, and uh, <laughs> Mr. Chair, I'd like to ask if you would like to have the uh, departments come up and uh, yeah, make Mr. A Johnson and Mr. Kerr, if you can uh, come, come on down, we'll grab one more chair. Mr. Curry even has a PowerPoint. Go. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chair. You. Members of the committee, I'm Don Kerr. I'm the, the Executive Director of the Minnesota Department of Military Affairs. And I do have a quick presentation to describe the elements in the bill. But we've actually also got a description of an element that's not in the bill now that it's been amended. That's okay. We understand the, the zero target nature. But it will be in your packet and we will be in the slides. Uh, this is a summary of each of those two items, the last two increasing the Minnesota State Armory Building Commission's bonding authority, and then uh, the rededication of the Gopher Gunner Bridge. Uh, we did have a request in to increase the enlistment incentives, but again, we understand that was amended out uh, based on the lack of availability of funding. So here we are, MZBC, the Minnesota State Armory Building Commission, is a statutory corporation chaired by the Adjutant General, comprised of several officers of field grade, and they have the authority to sell bonds to raise money for federal match to build armories. Uh, they were originally uh, awarded bonding authority in 1949, $4.5 million cap, and it that was increased in 1988 to $7 million, and most recently in increased in 2000 to $15 million. The challenge that we have is the cost of construction has increased exponentially, and for us to be able to come up with a 25% match to construct multiple armories over a 20 year period of, of bond sales, uh, we really need to have more ability on the table. And so increasing to 45 million is the appropriate level uh, that we think is, should be out there. That would give the opportunity then to match federal funding and continue to build new armories in Minnesota as those opportunities come up. The second uh, element of this is rededication of the Gopher Gunner Memorial Bridge. So I'll call your attention to the, the, the depiction of the postcard on the slide. That's actually a 1926 postcard hmm. that was uh, created in honor of the dedication originally of the Mendota Bridge to the Gopher Gunners. And the Gopher Gunners were originally the 151st Field Artillery uh, Regiment. And they were mobilized for World War I in a thing called the Rainbow Division, the 42nd Division, that was commanded by Major General Douglas MacArthur, where he started as a colonel. And Douglas MacArthur commanded that division. He actually had an experience working with reserve components as an active officer and had a high opinion of the capability of reserve components and volunteered to stand up a division with a battalion from every state. 
And our contribution to that was the 151 field artillery. And the 151 field artillery uh, made a huge impact uh, during World War I. Uh, they, they may have fired the first shot in World War I from an American cannon. And uh, anyway, they were, they were honored in 1926 by dedicating the Gopher Gunner Bridge, the Mendota Bridge, uh, to their lineage. Um, and as that bridge is under reconstruction, some members of the regiment went out and said, hey, this is still dedicated. And there's a plaque that's about this big on each end of the bridge that you can only see if you're walking. And um, we feel it's probably appropriate to replace that with, an, with something a little more legible. And so we went to MnDOT and asked, hey, so what do we gotta do to do this? And they said, well, the only way we can spend money on that stuff is if you guys go get a bill passed. <laughs> And we really don't want to spend money on it either, by the way, because we don't want to take it out of our appropriation. And, and so we agreed that any cost for this, and it will be a nominal cost to create those new uh, signage, that our agency would fund that bill. And so I'm going on the record right now here <laughs> stating that it, you know we are willing to, to put that bill out of the Department of Military Affairs general support account. Uh, so that really isn't a, a factor moving forward. But, uh, that's the basis of this. We think it's important to rededicate that bridge almost 100 years after it was originally dedicated. And uh, with that, Mr. Chair, I'll, I'll stand for questions. Yeah, so I have not walked that bridge, but I have biked it, and I did not notice the plaque, so it needs to be more prominent. <laughs> oh, Representative Hudella, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So as a longtime 151 field artillery uh, <laughs> field artillery soldier, I look forward to amending this into the transportation omnibus. Um, <laughs> if I can, I'll try and squeeze it out of Chair Hornstein, um, but uh, appreciate the willingness to cover the costs and look forward to um, much more prevalent signage, and there's no doubt that the 151 fired the first shot in World War I, so thank you. And in North Africa, in World War II. Any other further questions or discussion? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so hearing that story, which is incredible, uh -huh. are you guys going to, when the signs are done, are you going to have a dedication and some sort of ceremony to, to really tell the story? Because I think that's another road trip. I mean, we don't have to take one of them helicopters yeah, yeah. or not, but, you know, <laughs> it would be fun to, to go there. And so, Mr. Chair, Representative, we rarely miss an opportunity to have a good ceremony. <laughs> I think you can count on it. All right. Any other questions, discussion? If Mr. not, Mr. Chair, if I may, I would like to thank Lead Bliss for not offering an amendment to send this to transportation. <laughs> uh, Representative Hutella did uh, say that he was going to do that. So we are going to be dropping it in, in there. Same verbiage. I'll, I'll, I'll help lobby uh, Chair Hornstein on that one. I do want to question though. Uh -huh. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, to Ben, question for you on the veterans home health care. Uh, the amount uh, down here on the bottom lines uh, 431 to 434. If the amount available in fiscal year 2024 is insufficient, the amount appropriated in 2020, uh, basically want to reach into next year's budget. Um, what happens if we can't do that? Do you have other funds? That, the reason I'm asking is, you know, we're going into uh, what is it, the structural uh, screw it. We're going to a deficit yeah. uh, plan is, is the outlook. We know money's going to be tight next year. Are you going to come back for more money if this happens? Um, I understand we need to do it, uh, but is there anywhere else that we might be able to, to pull from? Do you have open uh, uh, FTE requisitions that haven't been filled? There might be a little slush there. Um, can you just explain? What happens if we can't do it next year? Sure. Uh, Chair Elkins, uh, mm -hmm. lead list. Yes, and in fact, the, uh, the health care division has been working hard. Once this was identified as a potential uh, challenge for the agency, uh, our, our CFO and finance team went to work on trying to identify ways to cover the difference between now and the end of this fiscal year. We feel that we're in a good place, uh, given that all three new homes are open. We've got at least 20 veterans in each of those homes and are in the process of getting that VA recognition survey done, which would allow us to access the federal per diem. Uh, so between some cost savings between now and the end of this fiscal year, and uh, our expectation that we'll come online and begin re receiving uh, reimbursements from the federal VA, uh, we'll be, we believe we'll be in a good place, and uh, don't expect to have to come back and seek additional funding. 
question? Follow up. Mm -hmm. uh, do you happen to know uh, an idea when that uh, approval or recognition might take place? Is there a timeline that that's somewhat solid? Yeah, I, Chair, I can, but yeah, yes, um, help me. I apologize. <laughs> um, the, the the VA has already surveyed the Montevideo Veterans Home. Um, there are almost no uh, veterans homes in the country that are successful on the first VA survey. Um, they were deficient in three minor areas, but of course that means they got to come back and do a full uh, full survey again. We've got Preston and Bemidji online as well. Um, we've got uh, really, um, we learned a lot about what the process is going to be. Uh, we haven't done a new home recognition survey in 30 years. In mm -hmm. fact, um, yeah, in fact, since Laverne came online 30 years ago. Um, so we're learning about the process and making sure that we're ready to go. There is no guarantee that we will be successful first try at either Bemidji or Preston, but we're, we're taking the lessons learned in the after action and really applying those two. So we're hopeful within the next three months that that certification happens. Uh, I'll, I'll say that there is no, uh, we can't do any clawback and secure any, any missed opportunities, uh, but going forward, it'll put us in a good place. And we have some really good um, residents mixes out in those new homes. So. Okay. Representative Place. And, and one more question. Mm -hmm. I know there's a, a a wait between the first survey and the second survey, right? Is it is a definite timeline, like 30 days, 90 days? Uh, Chair Elkins, uh, lead list. As soon as soon as we receive the official word, we are back on the list. So typically, they will schedule a month. They'll give you a month and then let you know when within that month okay. they'll be back. Um, but we're we're hard after it. It's important. Um, it, we, we can't expand our our uh, resident mix without this uh, recognition. With with the funds we've got available from the state of Minnesota, the general fund, so. All right, thank you. Okay. Representative Bennett. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I'd just like to add, I'd like to give kudos to you all for these new veterans homes. I have some very good friends in Albert Lee and the husband is one of the residents in Preston in the home. And I've heard nothing but good things and praise about the staff about the whole environment and they just got a new puppy by the way so it's just I've just heard really really good things and want to thank you and everybody else who's helped to get this going because uh, at least the one in Preston is top-notch so thank you okay. Chair Newman any closing remarks before we uh, uh, no. Ways and means. Mm -hmm. uh, motion. Yeah, the, the intent, uh, Mr. Mm -hmm. Chair, is to move it to Ways and Means, and then it's going to be attached to the state government bill. Uh, so, and then we're, we'll be working with the uh, Senate to get all these bills put together. Right. Okay. Um, the motion moved. Uh, we've moved uh, to um, uh, refer the bill to the Ways and Means and co uh, committees as amended. as amended. Of course, with by the DE. No further discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, it's members approved. So uh, that's the last item we had on the agenda. Or uh, Representative Bliss. Mm -hmm. Chair Newton, um, going to the state government, is it the finance or the finance and policy provisions are going to uh, state government? All right, thank you. Okay, with that, I think we are adjourned.